Top five quarterbacks in the league. Patrick Tua, Lamar, Dak, Baker Mayfield. <laughs> All right. All right, so what is the way so that, what is so funny? The confidence, the confidence with which he came out with Patrick Tua, and then he kind of and, and then he had to go to the Rolodex. Yeah, yeah. And you're laughing about the Rolodex of number which one stand like. I mean, obviously, Baker stands, <laughs> stands out. Hey, he, I get, listen. He got tired at the four. He got, he got, got at, at the four. four. He was like, I'm just, I'm just throw a name he started there. spinning wheels at, 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 after the fourth one, man, just threw Baker in there. But listen, man, I, I'm not I'm not in here to the disparage. Baker, Baker had a hell of a year last year. And shout out to Baker for getting that new contract. But come on, man. Come on. Number one Top overall, five? Man. Top five? Come on. So, if if you take exception with, with his top five, what what is your top five? Oh, here's mine. Right, listen, Mahomes, obviously, number one. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. I'm throwing Matt Stafford in there. I, I like I'm a big That's the second day in a row Stafford's gotten top five quarterback love on, on I, I'm a bit like I'm a I'm a big Matt Stafford guy. I'm the, listen, you can hate on me if you want, but I'm throwing Stafford in there and Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott was a is a top five quarterback in this league. Why are you looking so shocked, Matthew Barry? Look, I'm just, I'm just taking it all in because I, I see a quarterback that's, that's very turnover prone in Josh Allen, who's, but he's a top flight player. Joe Burrow went healthy. You could argue is a top two quarterback in the league. Dak Prescott, good in the regular season. Postseason leaves something to be desired. Matthew Stafford's got the Super Bowl ring. He's, look, I'm just, you, good, give me your list. I'm going to go, go with Patrick Mahomes. Shocked. I'm going Lamar Jackson. I'm going to go with Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, and Dak Prescott. You didn't have Lamar Jackson. I did not. Woody. I did not. He's right, out, like right listen, outside. I was going to get him. Woody, how do you not have Lamar Jackson on this list? How do I not have Lamar Jackson? Because I think that playing the quarterback position from within the pocket, that's where the game is won. I think that he's outside of my top five from that metric alone, just playing the quarterback position from within the pocket. I think those those guys that, that I had in my top five, I would take those guys. I mean, I can't argue with that. He, I mean, he got definitely got better last season. It was something that was a glaring need that he needed to work on, and he got better. Uh, I want to see how he's going to be able to do in year two. You know, yeah, Todd Monk was good for him in that offense. Exactly. Yep. And, and by the way, that's the second time in the show today, Woody, that, that Harry's given us a list and then silence. You gave us it's you, you gave us your five guys like that's it. I'm done. Like my list should speak for itself. It doesn't here. You got to explain your list to the beautiful people <laughs> out there. But a good quarterback list nonetheless. The Lamar Jackson over Damian Woody. It is list season. It's coming to you live from above the Heineken River deck at Pier 17. We also have a football Friday. Harry Douglas, Damian Woody, Jeff Darlington going to join us as we count down to training camp. This time, by the end of next week, four teams will have reported to training camp. We're going to start with a discussion about the Texans. They're first up. They are five days away from the opening camp. And Damian Woody is C.J. Stroud already, based on what we saw from his rookie year, a top five foot. Listen, when I had, when I was on the phone and was producing this question came up, boy, I had to think long and hard about this one because that's <laughs> the type of year C.J. Stroud had. I'm, I'm going to say not yet, but he'll have an opportunity this year to jump that list because – he, no quarterback in NFL, rookie quarterback in NFL history had the year C.J. Stroud had. And this Texas team is even better than it was last year. So, not yet, not yet, but it could happen. It could happen this year. Yeah, I agree with Woody. And what I love about C.J. Stroud also was when the game is on the line and he has the football, he showed in this rookie season that he can be that quarterback and that guy that you can count on. They had a first place. They won first place in the AFC South. They have a first place schedule they have to play now. So they play a lot of the big dogs, a lot of the top quarterbacks in the National Football League. I want to see how he's going to do in year two. Matt, I saw that man go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. Yes. And yeah. That, that right there, when, when that happened, I'm like, oh, yeah. We got he, another, he dog. We got another dog in this league. But even that offensive system. It normally takes quarterbacks two, three years to grasp that offensive system and, and thrive in it and have success. C.J. Stroud was able to do it in one year and lead his team, a, 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 a program that everyone thought was in shambles. Rookie head coach, rookie play caller, rookie quarterback, C.J. Stroud was able to lead those guys to the playoffs, not only first round, win a game, 
but they lost to the Baltimore Ravens, but they still were able to get there. By the way, what about what the Texans have done with the Cleveland Browns' capital and the Deshaun Watson deal? They drafted Will Anderson Jr. They got the offensive rookie of the year, the defensive rookie of the year. For me, for my money, they're probably the best up-and-coming team in the NFL. As we count down to training camp, next up seven days away from the Bears reporting to training camp. So, Jeff Darlington, a la C.J. Stroud, can Caleb Williams lead the Bears to the playoffs? Well, Look, Caleb Williams is certainly in a great situation, one that most number one overall picks don't find themselves in because, quite frankly, the Bears didn't quote-unquote earn that number one overall pick. They acquired it, so they weren't bad enough to have him coming in. This feels like a nice situation for Caleb Williams entering this Bears situation, but he does enter into a division with a Lions team that is surging, a Packers team that continues to develop, and a Vikings team that probably, by the way, shouldn't be counted out either. Damien? The NFC North is going to, is, is tough. Outside the AFC North, this is the toughest division in football. Caleb, Caleb, again, I think Jeff said it right. They weren't the number one pick because of record, but I don't know of any organization that's surrounded the number one pick the way that the Chicago Bears have done it with Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. I think they fall just short, but they're going to give people a lot of hell this year. Uh, this upcoming season. A lot, lot of talent. That we will have. never see this again. We will never see a number one overall pick go into a situation that Caleb Williams is in right now with the Chicago. That's a <laughs> ready-made situation to succeed. You wonder if they'd have kept Justin Fields with all that talent around him, what would have happened, but that didn't happen. Justin Fields now right. with the Steelers. As we count down to kick our count down to camp, rather, four teams at the end of next week. The Ravens are up in eight days. Harry is Derrick Henry, the missing piece for the Ravens. I believe he is. And what's unique about Baltimore since 2000, 2018, they've been top three in rushing, but what they haven't had for Lamar Jackson is someone else that can close the deal late in games. That that's what Derrick Henry provides for the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson doesn't have to, doesn't have to have it all be on his shoulders. You can lean on a guy that literally led a team to an AFC Championship game by himself because he's strong, he's fast, he's physical, and he, he opposes his will. Jeff Darlington, where do you weigh in on this one? So I love the addition of Derrick Henry. I'm not discounting that. I just don't think he's the missing piece because I think the Ravens were already there. I was at that game against the Chiefs, and, like, I don't think that Lamar Jackson is the type of player to look back or let things haunt him, but that game feels like a haunting situation because he was there. He had it, and it felt like the Ravens went away from what their game plan could have been to win that game and let Lamar Jackson cook with his legs. I think they're already there. I don't think they even needed Derrick Henry, but certainly you can uh, add a little bit more juice to that fire, and I think it will help. He had some physicality to a physical division in the AFC. They're going to certainly be fun to watch. And the AFC, as we know, stops and starts with the Kansas City Chiefs. Two-time reigning champs are also eight days away from reporting the training camp. Hard to believe they blew through that offseason already. Woody, will the Chiefs be the first team ever to three-peat? Man, it's hard to bet against good things. That dude is that he's the he's the man. But I want to say no because so many things people don't understand like how hard it is to win one. Then you go out and re- go back to back to win a third one. So many things have to break your way. And I said in the, in, in the first hour, they've been incredibly healthy. Yeah. Can we count on that for three seasons in a row? Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. Harry, what do you think? I think they're going to be able to do it. Uh, you have the standard at quarterback in Patrick Mahomes, and I think what's unique about their offense, they were not explosive last season. They drafted Xavier Worthy, who we know has run the fastest time in, in combine 40 history. They also bring over Hollywood Brown from the Arizona Cardinals. So now you have two guys that can take the top off the defense. That's going to leave that much more room for Rasheed Rice and also Travis Kelsey to be able to work underneath. And then all the guys that they're returning on defense that were a major contributor to their success last season. Darling, like the best defense in the NFL last year. Darling, to give, give people a nugget about teams that have won back-to-back Super Bowls. What, what was that again? Yeah, I got some stats for you to show how hard this is. First of all, eight teams in NFL history have won back-to-back Super Bowls. None of them, none of those eight teams made it back to even play for a third straight Super Bowl. They didn't even get there. And three of those eight teams did not even make the playoffs. It is so brutally hard to do this. Of course, it's so hard to even repeat. That hadn't been done in two decades, and the Chiefs did that. So count them out if you want, but I'm not going to do it.
You guys like that nugget? That's a good nugget right there. You can have that nugget for breakfast. Chef Darlington doing some reporting.